Morning all. All right, so there's only three games tonight in the National Hockey League, meaning the previews at the bottom of the board. We got some news of the day to talk about, and we're going to talk about the NHLPA vote. It's always interesting when the vote is is released to see if opinions have changed, and some opinions have not changed from last year to this year. Uh, but one opinion that seems to be the same is you either believe that the Coyotes can make it work or you believe they can't. For me personally, I, I'm to the point where I, it's it's been talked about enough that I, I, I really am to the point where I'm like, just just finish it. In June, I want it over with. So they get the land, it, it stays, or they move to Salt Lake City and the, you end up with the Phoenix Batmans 10 years later. I, I, don't, I don't care what happens. Um, I want it. I want it to be done. Uh, there comes a point where you're like, you know, I've, I've been talking about this on this channel for about seven years. I, I think, and it, it, it is, it is a constant thing with the Coyotes, uh, which I think is unfair to Coyote fans. But there's the the information that's out there. So today, Frank Saravelli reports on how the NHL has two schedules: one that has the Coyotes staying in Arizona, and they have a contingency as well where they're in Salt Lake City. This has been known for a while. So Frank Cervelli is reporting on something that's been known for a while. It's not really news to me. Um, it's something that Elliot Friedman's talked about. It's something that Craig Morgan's talked about. It's something that we know is out there. But it, it depends on who's talking about it, and it depends on how they approach it. So to some, it's, okay, it's an emergency contingency just in case, and to others, it's a, see, the NHL thinks they're going to have to pull up stakes and leave. And again... I, I don't I don't care. I, I, I just want it done. I want them to either, you know, bid for the land and get that bid and be done with it. Or if the bid falls through, then I want the NHL to to uh, to affect some sort of change because there's been talk about, you know, Marijuana and whether or not he's looking for other buyers and all this. And and again, it's just it's it's absolute craziness. Um, I will say that as a as a business person, you'd have to you'd have to make sure you've got all your ducks in a row, and just in case something goes awry, you want to make sure that if you want to sell, that you can, right? So at any rate, um, there's there's arguments going back and forth online over this, and it's it's something I've I mean we've seen it here on the channel as well, but <clears throat> it it is interesting to me how one person can interpret information one way and then other people will interpret that exact same information in another way and that's where we're at there so uh last night alex ovechkin uh set a new record uh he hit the 30 goal mark for the 18th time he has 22 goals in his last 32 games uh absolutely insane run he had eight goals through his first 43 games he looked done like he he, he wasn't playing particularly well i thought uh, look kind of slow out there, and then all of a sudden the puck starts going in, and and now he's back to being one of the best goal scorers in the league. Uh, the fact that he's got to 30 goals is nothing short of remarkable, um, almost miraculous. But he passes Mike Gartner. He was tied with Mike Gartner with 17 30 goal seasons. They did a career video on Gartner years ago. Uh, Mike Gartner was also a great skater, really really good player. Sadly, got traded by the New York Rangers the year that they won the Stanley Cup. So he played with them during that year, but got traded away, and um, didn't end up getting a Stanley Cup in his career. That's as close as he got. Um, so uh, kudos to Ovechkin for proving that aging isn't is, is just it, apparently you don't have to age. You can just go. Ah, I've decided not to. Uh, Crosby's in that camp as well. Andrew Kopp. Um, apparently, according to Coach Lalonde, he has a broken cheekbone. He's not going to play tomorrow. When I read he wouldn't play tomorrow, I thought, well, yeah, if you got a broken bone in your cheek, you need at least a couple of days off. So we'll see how long Cop's going to be out. Of course, for Detroit, they are in a dogfight for that last wild card spot, and it's not going to help having Cop out. I know the goal scoring isn't where you would want it to be with that contract, but still, he's a good, solid two-way forward. And uh, that's that's one player that's going to be missed by Detroit uh, for however long he's going to be out, right? Uh, so the NHLPA, their vote results have been revealed. And I'll just go through who finished first. The most complete player last year was Crosby. The most complete player this year is, once again, Sidney Crosby. Majority of the union saying this is the most complete player in the NHL. I, I can't argue that he's not. Uh, and then you get into the most valuable player argument and it really depends on how you look at it and how you determine what makes a player most valuable i've been fascinated by the arguments i've seen again here on the channel and just in general online 
uh, because you've got McKinnon, you've got Kucherov, you've got McDavid, but then you've got Matthews, you've got Crosby, you've got others people can make an argument for. So Crosby named the most complete player. If you need a win, and the goaltender that you would want if you need a win, according to the union, is still Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, not a great season overall for Vasilevsky, but the player's going, nope, he's still the goalie we would want if you need one win. The forward, if you need one win, uh, Connor McDavid. McDavid, given that. And I'm always interested by that because McDavid, of course, doesn't have a Stanley Cup ring. So you would expect it to probably be somebody with a Cup ring. But in this case, no. Uh, players would want McDavid. Not that I think that if you added McDavid to last year's Vegas Golden Knights that they wouldn't win the Cup. Um, I think they still would. Uh, but yeah, and then the defenseman, if you want one win, uh, Kale McCarr. Uh, McCarr did really well in the voting here. Uh, he was also named the best breakout passer. So again, this is the Players Union, 635 votes come in. And uh, yeah, McCarr wins on those. Uh, McDavid won for best stick handler. So, you know, best puck handling goes to Connor McDavid. I can't argue that at all. Uh, Kucherov, best playmaker. So that makes a lot of sense as well. Although this year, he and McDavid both looking like they could hit 100 assists. Uh, pretty pretty strong overall record for Kucherov. Uh, Marshawn, again, gets the award he got last year. The player that you hate playing against, but you would love to play with. Uh, which I, I think is pretty standard. Uh, Marshawn is, has really... Uh, I think rounded out his game nicely. And so while the scoring this year hasn't been what it was, say, three, four years ago, um, I, I think Marshawn's really grown into a leadership role with Boston. And when people laugh about that, I get it. But his game has, has changed from where it was years back. Uh, Victor Hedman has been named as, by again, by the NHLPA, the most difficult to face in their own end. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Hedman is also, I think... He should be more in the conversation when it comes to Norris Trophy votes than what he has been. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about Hedman. I've talked about him a couple of times. But uh, yeah, Hedman should be in that conversation. Uh, the fact that the union says he's the toughest player to play in his own end tells you they have a lot of respect for him as well. Uh, if you want, if you need to win a faceoff, Ryan O'Reilly is the one that they voted as the one that if you need to win a faceoff. For the record, Crosby finished second in that voting, and it was close. Most of these votes weren't all that close, though. Uh, T-Mobile voted the toughest arena to play in. Uh, not a surprise there. Uh, Vegas, Vegas, though, it's it, it, it is a fun arena. I love where it is. The location's perfect. Uh, but yeah, T-Mobile named the toughest to play in. And once again, for Montreal fans, uh, Bell Center, best ice. I'm, I'm not surprised Vancouver's never very high in the best ice category. Uh, but yeah, Montreal definitely has the best ice. Uh, it seems like every year. They might as well just call it the Bell Center Award at this point because I think they've won it every year. I want to say I think maybe Detroit or Chicago won it at some point, but feels like the Union every year just says, yeah, Bell Center has the best ice. Uh, and yeah, so and then best style was Pasternak, but I, I didn't put it on the board because so that's kind of silly. Nylander was second in that. I, I don't know. How do you how do you measure that? It's, it's weird. All right, <clears throat> getting back to other news. With, uh, with the loss last night, the Buffalo Sabres officially eliminated from the playoff chase. It's been 13 seasons. So 13 years of, of playoff utility for the Buffalo Sabres. And, I mean, if, if you're a Sabres fan, it, it, it's, it has to be rough. Um, so let's see, 2011 was the last time they made the playoffs. So you're going to have kids uh, in middle school that haven't seen the Sabres in the playoffs. It's just sad. And it's sad, too, because I can remember a time when the Sabres were one of the best-run organizations in the league. I can remember a time when they were just one of the best teams in the league. Um, couldn't get over the hump in, in the Stanley Cup playoffs and win that Stanley Cup, but they they got to the Stanley Cup final in 99, and they were tough tough to play against. Not just for Hoshik reasons, either. They were tough to play against overall. So uh, hopefully this ends the drought. Hopefully 13 is where it ends. Next year they get in, and uh, we can... We can have a different discussion next year at this time. I, I feel bad for Sabres fans. I feel bad for the players too because, yeah, it's it's a tough break. Uh, and we'll see what the fallout is in Buffalo for this. You'd think somebody is going to have to go, uh, whether it's big changes on the ice, whether it's a change behind the bench, or whether it's a change above them. I can't see the general manager being replaced. I'd be, be kind of surprised if the coach goes, but again, 
very often uh, it becomes the the coach that's the the fall guy for that. So we'll see. So three games tonight in the NHL. Uh, one starting at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. So it doesn't start until later. And that's Chicago and St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis has won two of the first three meetings. They have to win to stay mathematically alive, basically. Um, St. Louis, 4-2 to two winners on November 26th. December 9th, 3-1 to one winners were the Blackhawks. And then the Blues won the third matchup, 7-5 to five on December 23rd. So they went in November and December. Uh, they met each other three times in that month. But for Chicago, they're 23-49-5 and five overall. Over their last 10, they're 5-5. Five and five. Uh, Nick Foligno has had a remarkable season for them. 17 goals, 20 assists, 37 points. I, I thought it was an eyebrow-raising decision when he went there. It's actually worked out really well for him. Uh, for St. Louis, 41-32-5 and five is their overall record. 5-3-2 and two in their last 10. Jordan Cairo has had an up-and-down season, but I think he's had a better second half than he had first half. 27 goals, 36 assists, 63 points for him overall. Not too bad. 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific start between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, they split the first two meetings, November 28th. Edmonton won in a shootout, 5-4. February 6th, Vegas won in regulation, 3-1. Uh, Vegas is 42-27-8. They're 6-3-1 over their last 10. They're coming off that loss against the Canucks. Uh, Dorofiev has impressed me this year as much as he did last year. He's only played 42 games. 12 goals, 8 assists, 20 points. Uh, I would think that next season he should be a regular in their lineup, right? Uh, and then for the Oilers, they're 47, 24, and 5 overall. They're also 6, 3, and 1 in their last 10. Matias Ekholm, 10 goals, 33 assists, 43 points. I've seen a lot of people asking why he's not getting the consideration for, for the Norris Trophy. <clears throat> My answer to that would be that he has 43 points. And generally speaking, it's going to be the defenseman with a ton of points that get the more attention. Uh, it's something we've talked about before. And no one has to sell me on Ekholm. He was in my, my top 10 defenseman in the NHL. Is it 2019? I am in my top 10. I think it was back then. 2019 or 2020. Uh, then we fast forward two hours to 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. And I'm going to be there. Uh, Vancouver hosting the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, Vancouver's won the first two meetings. Though they were not blowouts. Uh, January 18th, 2-1. to one, And April the 3rd, 2-1. to one. So we'll see how it turns out tonight. It will be a 2-1 to one win. Uh, Arizona is 33, 40, and 5. They're 5 and 5 in their last 10. They're coming off of that 5 0 shutout that they suffered uh, against the Seattle Kraken. Uh, could not solve Grubauer. We'll see how they do tonight. Uh, Carcone, 21 goals, 8 assists, 29 points. Is noteworthy because, first off, 21 goals. Kudos to him for getting there. And secondly, he was a farmhand for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, played in their AHL organization and so might be motivated to get a goal against him tonight in Vancouver. Uh, the Canucks are 48, 22, and 8 overall. They're 6 and 4 over their last 10 games. Dakota Joshua deserves a lot of a lot of kudos for how he's played since returning from injury. And just overall this season, 59 games, 16 goals, 14 assists, 30 points. He's been excellent and uh, looking forward to seeing what he might be able to do again tonight. But let me know your picks in the comment section below. Let me also just know your, your thoughts on everything in the comment section below. I've, I've mentioned before, I'll say it again. When I just when the Coyotes thing is just done, it's it's done, and I'll be I'll be happy. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support. As always, I will talk to you again soon.